if you're anything like me, uh, I've started about a million different Bible studies over the years. I see one that I like and I start one and then I kind of lose interest in it. And then I see another one that I like and I start that one and it goes on, so on and so forth. But I think if we're honest, we could all admit that at times consistency in our studying of God's word can be challenging. In this season of the 24-7 challenge where we're engaging and um, stepping into our faith in a new way on a daily basis, I think before we can talk about what it takes to consistently build a habit of reading God's word, maybe we can ask ourselves, why? Why is it really that important to read God's word? Maybe these are questions that you've had, like, uh, I get everything that I need from a sermon and from worship music. Why do I need to read God's word? Or man, every time I read God's word, it just gets me more confused. And then I have more questions. Well, I want you to know that you are not alone in those questions, that those are things that we have all experienced in our time of understanding how to read God's word in a helpful and an inspired way. When I was little, my parents built a house in a little tiny suburb of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I love this house. They still live there to this day. And this is the kind of house that when you drive just right onto the driveway, it like nostalgia just floods all of your memories. And you're just reminded of all these different things that you did as a kid, running in the yards, playing in the trees. And so this house on Walker Ridge Road has so many memories. And I remember a specific memory that sticks out to me when my parents were laying the concrete for our driveway. I think I was about six years old. And I remember them walking in the house and saying, come on kids, let's, before the concrete sets, let's go write our names into the concrete. I wanted to share a picture of our names with you uh, just as a visual aid of like what this actually looked like. So this is the picture of um, my name and my sister's names um, next to me and just such a good memory. And I, even still to this day, when I go back to my house, I look at those names because it reminds me of a past moment that still carries significance today. And I really believe that scripture is somewhat like this, that on the pages of God's word, on these pages here, you get to see in all these different Bible stories, in the Old Testament and then in the New Testament, the handiwork of God, his, his fingerprints on different people in different situations. He intentionally crafted each word on this page that he used his prophets and disciples to write for us so that we could understand this God who created us. Just like those names were significant. When we look back at them, they represent something much bigger than just a scratchy name in a concrete slab. They represent something more significant. And I think that's what scripture is, is that it represents the heart of God. And it almost allows us to see ourselves in him and in this story that he's writing for us. So what does it look like to engage with God's word in a vibrant way? Maybe you have friends or you yourself have a really deep, vibrant experience and a daily kind of discipline in reading God's word. But maybe there's some of you that, if you could be honest, say this has not been something that's really been a challenge for me. That every time I open the Bible, I just get more confused or I don't even know where to start or my translation of the Bible doesn't even make sense to me. Friends, you're not alone. I think that we're all on this journey of discovering how we can continue to engage in God's word in a really meaningful way. And I wanna give you three different ways that have been super helpful for me along my journey of growing in my study of God's word. The first one is meditating on one passage of scripture. And I love this because the book of Psalms really speaks to this. Psalm one, verse two, it says, I meditate on his word day and night. And I think that there's something powerful that happens when we meditate on God's word. So we could take one small passage, maybe even one verse, like the verse, be still and know that I am God, or I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I think this also slows down our uh, production oriented nature that I don't know if you're like me, but I just like to get things done. I like to, uh, check off my checklist. Hey, read scripture. Okay, done. Good to go. But actually taking this 24 minutes that you're going to be spending and reading one verse and just being okay with that. 
The second one is reading until God shows you something. And maybe you've heard this before. I remember when I was in youth group, they um, challenged us to read scripture until God kind of lit something off the page, metaphorically speaking, um, and kind of in a way that stuck out to us. Reading a passage of scripture until there's something in it that God wants to show you in a new way has been really powerful for me. It almost like, it's almost like saying, God, I give you the space to speak to me about this passage. Instead of just coming at it with our own cultural and uh, maybe even historical preferences and context, we're actually coming at it from saying, God, what am I, what have I never seen in this passage before? Show me something new about this passage, passage that can apply to my life. And the third one is a kind of contradicting the first one, but it's a really awesome way to really get the big scope of a story is reading a whole chunk of scripture at a time. So reading like a whole book of the Bible, reading one of the gospels, Mark, the book of Mark, all in one sitting. Now it takes a little bit of time, but really being able to get the full context of what this uh, author was writing about and how he was talking about Jesus and talking about the disciples engaging with each other or reading like the book of Ephesians. I think it has four chapters and sitting down and reading the whole book of Ephesians. You know, what we sometimes forget is that these passages of scripture, some of these um, New Testament passages were actually written as letters to a church that the people that were receiving these letters would actually sit down and read them in one sitting. And I think there's something powerful about that. I think it gives us the overarching theme and what the author was trying to say about God and about Jesus in a, in a given passage. During week two of the 24 seven challenge, you're going to be diving into Bible study and reading God's word in a new way. So I would definitely take notes about those three different things. I would encourage you to try them. So on Monday and Tuesday, I encourage you to pick one passage of scripture. There's passages in Psalms that are really great that um, really allow us to see the heart of God. And there's passages in um, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians that really are self-reflective tools that when we read a, a passage of scripture, we, we have to do something with it. On Wednesday and Thursday, I would encourage you to read a passage like um, you're reading it for God to speak to you. So keep reading until God says something. <laughs> it can be a really fun challenge. And then on Friday and Saturday, I encourage you to read a book of the Bible. So pick a book. It doesn't have to be a super long book. I think uh, Philemon has one or two pages. So there's some pretty small books. Um, I wouldn't maybe recommend reading Psalms in one sitting. I think there's 149 chapters. So maybe not that one. But a really um, good practice is reading the full um, book of the Bible in one sitting. It's really empowering. And you almost get to get into it like a like you're actually reading a, like a book. And it reminds you this actually really happened. This is historical text. And my prayer and hope for you is that you would be able to engage with God's word in a new way. That this, uh, the words on these pages wouldn't be confusing, but that they would, they would bring life to you in a new way. And maybe those of you who've been reading the Bible for 30, 40, 50 years would experience a new aspect of who God is in this time. That is my prayer for you.